What's up guys, it's Oilfilly215 here and today I'm going to show you how to make the intro you just watched in Sony Vegas Pro 13. Okay, so the main purpose of this video is to make a cool intro with text that is transparent on the inside um, with picture, you know, inside the text where it's supposed to be transparent and also you can have a moving background as well. So in the intro, I didn't have a moving background, it just had um, my uh, OO Philly 205 logo, um, but you can you can make a moving background uh, as well as you know moving video inside the text. So without further ado, let's hop in there. Okay, guys. So first thing you want to do is you want to import your clip, the clip that you want to be inside your text. So <clears throat> as you've seen in the intro, I want. Um, Pretty much where I get a, like a mean, dirty, nasty quick scope. Um, it's real nice and slow down and buttery. Um, but this is like a whole, you know, I made a video on how to make it nice and, you know, with the really smooth slow motion. But that is, you know, for a whole nother time. <clears throat> so I just want the beginning clip. So I'm going to let it fade out right there. And uh, I'll split it right here. So we're going to split the clip just having the cool slow motion and as you can see it kind of just comes to a kind of comes to it like a really you know uh, like a halt comes to a nice halt so I'm gonna try and put a nice um, fade on that so let's okay so there we go looks better so we got our beginning clip you wanna go ahead and hit control shift Q and that will open up another video track above the current track you're working on. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to right click and insert text media. And I I already have a preset, but just choose whatever text font that you want. I'm going to use Philly Sans. I like this cuz it's this nice um kind of Philly style uh lettering. Okay, so let's add our text. We're going to write are you ready? Now I can't really add a question mark because it, it turns out all weird and not the same font style and everything. So we're just going to write are you ready. Now the text I believe in the video was 52. But I want to see if I can make that a little bigger here. Alright that's good. That's perfect. Um, we're just going to leave it default. Don't worry about coloring anything like that. Um, as you can see this has an outline on it. Uh, if you want to do that go right ahead. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Philly Sans, by the way, you could probably download from Defont.com or something like that. It's it's free to use. So once you have the text, um, in the video, the text was actually six seconds long. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward on my timeline to six seconds and then drag the uh, text so that it is six seconds long. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to keyframe this because we don't want it to just be immediately are you ready we want it to be like uh, how I had it in the video was every I believe it was two seconds um, it, you know a word would come up so it was are and then you ready so we're gonna wanna keyframe it so that over time it does that it just says are you ready instead of all at one time so we're gonna go ahead and skip forward to two seconds and uh, we're going to hit event pan crop and here uh, at, let's see how am I going to want to do this um, okay well first off you want to click mask so now you're in your masking uh, properties and what we're going to want to do is uh, let's go ahead and let's just darken the whole thing so right now it's it's not doing anything you don't notice anything in the preview window you want to go to mode and turn it to negative so it actually hides it so here we could we could start uh, working with it a little bit so we're gonna go back to the first keyframe and let's go ahead and just delete that uh, makes it easier so we're going to actually add a keyframe and then move ahead one and we'll make our visible so as you can see R is visible now um, it's going to be visible all the way up until 
Uh, let's see. Wait, let's let's make sure we're getting this right here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is kind of like, you know, I remember how to do this, but I'm kind of trying to remember off the top of the head. So, you want to go back to this keyframe we just made, and we're going to go ahead and delete that, and then add another keyframe. You know, it's just kind of like we're working with it. Um, that was just a good foreground. So, now this entire time, all the way till two seconds, uh, it's going to be R. So now at two seconds, we're going to go ahead one frame using your, you know, arrow key or whatever. Go ahead, just one frame. And now we're going to make it so that U is now visible. And then obviously, you know, we're going to go to uh, four seconds. And now we're going to make it, um, we're going to add a keyframe at four seconds. Go ahead, one frame. And then once again, ready will then be visible. So let's go ahead and see what we're working with here. I'm just gonna, uh, actually I'll be quiet so you could hear it. Okay, so as you can tell, it seems like it's a little bit off. So this is where I'm gonna use my ears and kind of uh, match it with the song. That's kind of, you know, the purpose of a montage, you know, you roll with the song. So I'm going to, I'm going to listen here and, uh, it, by pressing M on your keyboard, you could put markers. It's a good way of remembering, uh, certain spots in a timeline without really having to stop. Okay. So right around here, uh, I heard the first, you know, Ooh, ah, you know, in the song. So I'm going to put a, a marker there. Okay, actually, it was a little bit before that. I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, that's good. Okay, a little bit forward, another marker. Alright, we're gonna put another marker. And then that should be alright. So, now what we're gonna go ahead and do is... So, we're gonna go back in here. And we're gonna make it, uh, we're gonna pull it actually forward a little bit. So we're gonna hit up on the arrow key to zoom in on our uh, keyframe timeline. And we're gonna pull these, um, these keyframes forward. So R is gonna pop up uh, with the first ooh, and then, you know, obviously ah, and then it's gonna keep going. So we're just going to click on our markers so it goes there and we're going to just pretty much, we're going to roll with the punches here, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make it so you, it, you know, we're going to just synchronize it pretty much. So as you can tell, the third one, I'm going to do the same, um, going back in here. And this wasn't the same in the video, but I feel like it will work uh, a little bit better. So if anything, you know, I'm, I'm improving as we go. So let's try this again and see how it comes out. All right, that is totally beautiful, awesome. So we don't want it to uh, just immediately fly at the screen really fast. We kind of want it to be nice, smooth, and buttery. So I would say just from eyeballing it, right there looks good. We're going to go ahead and add a keyframe. And that is just so that are you ready stays in that exact spot until that point in time, then it'll move. Cause we don't want it, we don't want to just add a keyframe at the end of the timeline where we want it to be, cause it just won't go at the right speed. So we're going to put a keyframe there. And now at the very end of the timeline, we're going to go ahead and, um, actually, no, 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 I did that wrong. You want to add the keyframe in the position slot. So we're going to go ahead and delete that because that's the mask category. Switch back to position, then add a keyframe. Um, now, click at the very end of the timeline and use your uh, keypad uh, to zoom out. And what we're going to pretty much do here is I'm going to hold shift and control and that's going to make it so that it moves within, I don't know if you could see these dots but it connects with the dots here. So it makes it so that it won't distort it really. 
Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to describe it, but pretty much I'm just going to move it in on an angle here. And as you can see, it's perfectly coming towards the text. So right about there looks good. We're going to roll with that. That looks awesome. So let's see how this actually turns out. I'm, I'm going to put it towards the end here. Um, I think it could come a little closer to the screen and also I think it could go a little faster. So what we're going to end up doing is, is we're going to pull this forward just a little bit. And on top of that, we're going to go ahead and click back on the last keyframe and we are going to zoom in and um, we're going to eyeball it. So now this is where you could distort it. So be careful, but I'm going to pull it in on an angle. I'm going to try and be as precise as possible. And right about there looks good. You don't want it to be too close. You don't want the very last thing to be like just black. So that looks good. Let's uh, let's watch this one more time. Okay, so that looks awesome. Um, now comes the transparent part. What we're actually going to do here is we're going to write uh, next to the text on the track. Uh, on our timeline so it's the first track on the timeline we're gonna go ahead and click on composite mode and we're gonna turn it to multiply mask and now as you see the picture is inside the text now the problem with this is is after the uh, pretty much the text flies at the screen as I move forward on the timeline it multiplies it permanently so uh, I'm it's kinda hard to describe but pretty much it will be black it won't go to the text as if we turned it back to uh, normal mode where the te uh, like the video is there so there's our problem but I'm gonna show you how to get around that so you're gonna wanna put it back on multiply mask and what you're actually gonna wanna do is is you're going to wanna click and drag and make sure you have it set up so that you just render the text and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna render just the text so it's going to be the picture inside the text and once you render it we can then delete what we have on the timeline here and import the um the rendered finished uh text and we could switch the first track on the timeline back to normal mode so that we get the picture at the end but we get the multiplied uh video inside the text as well so it's pretty ingenious it's a pretty cool way to do it so I'm gonna be right back once I render it and I'll show you what I mean okay guys so I just rendered it out and uh, pretty much now we could go ahead and delete the text and also you know just to make it a little less cluttered we could go ahead and delete the markers we don't need them anymore and now when you bring the text on it will have an audio track as well because it rendered the audio so you want to go ahead and click on the audio and press U on the keyboard. That is going to pretty much like detach or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the actual, uh, f you know, textbook example uh, definition for what U does. I think it just unhooks it pretty much. We'll say that U is unhooked the, um, pretty much the video portion from the audio portion. So we're going to hit U and then delete and that will delete the audio without deleting the video and then we could go ahead and click on the second track in the timeline and hit delete as well we don't need that so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch it back to um, source alpha which is pretty much normal mode and I'm gonna show you the difference before now when you click over here you have the video so here we go I'm gonna show you again what we're working with so far Okay, so there you go guys. That's pretty much the full um, animation I was going for, but to add the background as well, all you gotta do is, let's add another video track by hitting Control shift q and uh, we're gonna import our background. So I'm gonna do the same background that we did um, in the tutorial. Okay guys, so I have the picture 
uh, the emblem that I want. Now here's the problem. It's totally overlapping our text. And the same thing will probably happen with video. Um, so that's obviously a problem. So we want to go ahead and stretch it to the length of the text. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to composition mode and hit add. And um, there you pretty much go. So um, this, now as you can tell, uh, the text isn't like very visible like the background is really overwhelming it so what I would do for the video if that's the case and or the picture is what I did here is I just lowered the opacity so I believe I lowered it to about 46 percent um, it makes the text and everything you're going for pop out a little bit better um, I think the background really um, is just distracting because it's such a dark like a like a bright blue but I think, um, I don't know, if you run into the problem, just lower uh, the opacity of your background, and you should be alright. So, there you go guys, I'm going to show you the finished product here, and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so there you go. That is just a quick tutorial on how to make a nice cool text um, pretty much intro. Um, if you want to check out how I made that sick ass slow-mo uh, quick shot, uh, quick scope, um, link will be uh, popping up right now. And there you go. So I hope you enjoyed. If you want me to make any more tutorials on intros or effects or anything like that, um, just let me know, you know, I'm really trying to think of some cool ideas. I thought this was a little cool idea, you know, I like the effect, so if you want to add it to a montage or something like that, there you go. Um, leave a like, it really helps me out. And as always guys, it's Opilly215. Peace!